What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the JT Sports Podcast. I'm your host, JT. Monday Night Football for week seven of the NFL season is officially in the books. We were blessed again tonight with another Monday Night Doubleheader. And like always, only one out of these two games was actually watchable from start to finish. And that was the Cardinals taking down the Chargers 17 to 15 for a much needed win because they now are three and four in the season and they are tied for first place currently in the NFC West. Meanwhile, the Ravens took the Buccaneers to the dog shed. The final score was 41-31, but I promise you that game was a lot more one-sided than what the scoreboard shows because once the Ravens went up 34-10, to I turned the game off. I saw all that I needed to see. And before I give you guys my reactions to both of these games, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss when we go live and drop new content. And let's dive into it. The Ravens destroyed the Buccaneers tonight on Monday night. And I don't care what the final score shows because the Buccaneers scored a lot of throw points in this game in garbage time when the Ravens already had it won. And it was crazy because with the way the Buccaneers started this game, scoring on their first two possessions they were up 10-0 early and they were in cruise control and I thought that the Buccaneers were actually going to be the ones to dominate in this game but once Baltimore went down 10-0 Lamar Jackson and company they decided to lock in and they proceeded to score 34 unanswered points on Tampa Bay's defense they had no answers Baker Mayfield, he had a couple of costly interceptions in this game. Meanwhile, Lamar Jackson dropped four touchdowns in this game. And after watching Lamarvelous performance tonight, it's clear that he is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. Patrick Mahomes is playing like garbage. Lamar Jackson is very much on his way to capturing his third MVP award of his career because there's not a single quarterback in the NFL right now that has played as good, as consistent as what Lamar Jackson has for the Baltimore Ravens. And I believe that Lamar Jackson is the most talented quarterback in NFL history. We have never seen a quarterback that has had the ability to throw the football with the amount of accuracy Lamar does from inside of the pocket along with his elite athletic ability. Lamar Jackson is truly one of one. We will never see another quarterback like Lamar Willis in the NFL ever again. And every time you see LJ play, you just have to sit back and enjoy because there are a lot of quarterbacks coming out, entering the league now that get a lot of Lamar Jackson comparisons, but you are never going to find a quarterback that is the true definition of what it means to be a dual threat like Lamar does, man. He can kill you outside, inside the pocket, rather it be throwing the football, running the football. Let's pick your poison with this dude. And Derrick Henry is starting to emerge as... A MVP candidate himself, just like Lamar Jackson is, because this is another game that Derrick Henry took over in the second half. And you can see the role that Baltimore has for Derrick Henry, which is him being that closer. The reason why Baltimore lost to Kansas City in the AFC Championship last year was because they got away from their identity, which was their ground and pound. Well, with Derrick Henry, you're not going to give him just six touches in the AFC Championship game if you got to face off against Kansas City again this year because Derrick Henry now is becoming that guy that Baltimore goes to the closeout games to take time off the clock and it's really hard to tackle a dude like Derrick Henry especially when you get into the fourth quarter when guys are tired they're fatigued that's when Derrick Henry really becomes a beast and for Baltimore tonight it's pretty obvious that not only are they going to be in contention to get the one seed this year but they probably are the best team in the NFL right now. I don't think there are too many teams outside of the Detroit Lions, the Chiefs that are playing as good as what Baltimore is. And 
When they got out to that 0-2 start, I had some concerns. The offensive line, I didn't know if they were able to go to get that fixed up, but they were able to find a way to make the most of the young guys they got on that O-line, even though they have had some fair share of struggles here and there over the last couple of weeks. Tonight, early in this game, Lamar Jackson got sacked two straight times, but this offensive line has made massive leaps and improvements from what they were week one to what they are right now. Now, this unit still has a lot of work to be done, but they're playing some pretty good football in terms of how well they have held up in pass protection and the run lanes that they are creating for Derrick Henry on the ground. And the Buccaneers, you lost two of your best receivers. Mike Evans left this game early with a hamstring injury, and Chris Godwin got injured the last couple of seconds in this game, which is really infuriating if you're a Bucs fan because what the hell are you doing still going all out when the game is all but decided? And for him to get injured that late into the game, you got to blame Todd Bowles for that. You, you got to, at that point, pull your starters out or tell them, hey, man, the game's already over. No need to risk getting yourself injured because now your two best receivers are going to be missing a significant amount of time with how bad Chris Godwin's injury was. It looks like he could miss the majority of this season. So now the Buccaneers are going to be without their two best pass catchers for the next couple of weeks. You now are four and three and competition for the Falcons to win the NFC South. And I think with those two injuries, that offense is going to take a significant hit. And Baker Mayfield, for as good as how he has played this season, this dude struggles taking care of the football, man. He had two costly interceptions tonight. Both of them went to Marlon Humphrey. You would have thought that Marlon Humphrey was a receiver for the Bucs with how easy he was catching Baker Mayfield's passes. But the Buccaneers moving forward, since you are in the division that is only a two-team race, it's you in Atlanta, I don't think your injuries will hinder you too much, but with the Falcons being a more healthier team, when you end up facing off against them again, if you don't get both Godwin and Evans back for that game, you could be in trouble and it could cost you not only this division, but a chance at making the playoffs because the NFC right now is a dogfight. I mean, we don't really know who are the contenders, who are the pretenders right now. The 49ers are three and four. Pretty much everybody in the NFC West is three and four. And the only teams that look like the top dogs right now are the Detroit Lions, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Green Bay Packers. So for the Buccaneers, where do you lie on the pretender or contender conversation? Are you actually good enough to not just make it to the playoffs and make somewhat of a deep playoff run like you did last year? Or are you a pretender and your season is going to fall apart once we get into the midway point, which we're only a few weeks until we reach that threshold? So for the Buccaneers tonight, the fact that you just got clobbered by Baltimore was really disappointing because... For the amount of talent that this team has, they don't always play up to it. And you were good enough to keep this a competitive game. As good as what Baltimore is, like a lot of those interceptions could have been easily avoidable by Baker Mayfield. And you just didn't play your best game. And that's why I'm not that high on Tall Bowles as a head coach. The dude has overachieved the last couple of years, but I think he's the definition of what a mid coach looks like. You know, he's good enough to beat the teams that you are expected to beat. But once you go up against teams that are just as good or better than you and they got way better coaching, oftentimes the Buccaneers lose these games. If you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss when we drop new content and when we go live. Remember, we are not just a YouTube channel. We are a podcast. You can find this episode and all of our previous ones on all podcasting platforms, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast from. The JT Sports Podcast is available. If you're enjoying this episode, give us a five-star review. Share the pod with your friends, family members, and acquaintances. If you got any questions that you would like answered on a mailbag episode, you can send them 
in the DMs on Instagram at JT Sports underscore and on X at JT Sports underscore underscore. Also drop a follow as well. Cardinals got a much needed win over the LA Chargers 17 to 15. And I was surprised that Arizona won this game because how their offense just randomly disappears in the second half of games it just doesn't make any sense to me because you got a lot of talent on offense Colin Murray James Conner they were carrying this offense tonight they combined for nearly 200 rushing yards by themselves and it makes no sense how Arizona drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. so high in the draft and they don't really target him all that much. He didn't really get that involved in this game until later on in the fourth quarter when their announcers were calling them out on it. Like, Drew Pretzing, what the hell is this dude doing as the offensive coordinator for Arizona? Because every time I watch this offense, I see a unit that is severely underperforming. Kyler Murray is one of the most athletically gifted quarterbacks to ever enter the NFL. And you expect more explosiveness out of this offense with the depth that they have at wide receiver. I know that they're kind of banged up on the offensive line, but they got way too much talent. They be struggling to put points up on the scoreboard in this game. But what won this game for Arizona tonight was how well their defense played. They kept the Chargers out of the end zone all night long, and the Chargers came close to scoring a touchdown until Jalen Rager, he was about to score, and one of the Arizona Cardinals defenders knocked the ball out. He did a peanut punch, and it kept the Chargers from being able to score, and every time the Chargers had good drives, they always had to settle for field goals, and that ultimately is why the Cardinals won this game, and this is probably the best that I've seen this defense play under Jonathan Gannon. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you Cardinals fans are going to say, y'all, we've had better games when the defense has looked good. Look, I'm not going to act like I'll be watching a lot of Arizona Cardinals football because I don't, but watching you tonight, you know, your defense really impressed me. You did a really good job at harassing Justin Herbert all night long. This dude was running for his life. Your defense played really well tonight. And if they can sustain the level of play tonight for the rest of this season, you definitely could end up winning this division because you're tied for first place in the NFC West and this division is up for grabs. We thought this was going to be one of the better divisions in the NFL, but the Rams are banged up. The 49ers are banged up. Plus, they're underperforming right now. Seattle, they've been mildly inconsistent up to this point of the season. So this is a golden opportunity for Arizona where you can take this win and use it as motivation to give you momentum for these next couple of weeks as we near the month of November which is the most important month of the NFL because November around Thanksgiving is when we start to see teams separate themselves and for Arizona we still don't know how to categorize them are they actually a playoff team or are they a team that right now they look like a playoff team but once we get to November they're going to end up fading out down the stretch and they're going to finish 6 and 11 7 and 10 we will see but the fact that you were able to be the Chargers team that yeah they did have a lot of guys missing on offense they were down pretty much all of their starting wide receivers but Lap McConkey was a win that you needed to have it doesn't matter if the team you're going up against is fully healthy or depleted you got to win games like this in prime time Kyler Murray I was really impressed with how he played in this game now he could play much better but that big 44 yard touchdown run that he had pretty much gave Arizona a lot of momentum in that game at that point James Conner I am a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I love this dude when he was wearing the black and gold. I've always been a big fan of his game. When he's healthy, he's one of the best running backs in the league. I was listening to Bill Belichick's podcast a few days ago, and him and Matt Patricia, they were raving about James Conner. This dude is one of the bigger backs in the league, and despite him being big, he moves incredibly well for a guy of his size, has really good agility, really good contact balance, fantastic vision, and he's a great catcher of the football coming out of the backfield, which makes him the biggest weapon that the Cardinals have on that side of the football outside of Kyler Murray. 
Now, once they can better find a way to get MHJ involved, this offense could be really scary. But Drew Prancing as the offensive coordinator, I really don't know about this dude, man. I really don't. I don't think he's a good OC. I don't think that he's running an offense that maximizes all of Kyler Murray's skill set. I just think that after the season, the Arizona Cardinals should just part ways with this dude. And maybe a lot of you Cardinals fans probably already know that. You watch this team more than I do. But from what I saw tonight, I saw an offense that is less to be desired. You know, I believe Kyler Murray is probably the most underrated quarterback in the NFL right now because a few years ago, he was mildly overrated. But after that ACL injury that he sustained, people forgot about how good this dude is. And Colin Coward bashes the hell out of Kyler Murray. He says that he's not a winning player. I disagree with that. I believe you can win with Kyler Murray as long as you give him a really good offensive coordinator, which I don't think they have because how is it that Marvin Harrison Jr. is only being targeted, what, four or five times a game? That's foolish. Well, what are we doing here? When you got a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., you manufacture targets to him. Malik Neighbors is getting targeted like 12, 20 times a game with the New York Giants. They literally are scheming him open. Why can't the Cardinals do that for Marvin Harrison Jr.? You should be targeting this dude because even when he is covered, he still is uncovered. Come on, man. We need to see more MHJ. And plus, I got him on my fantasy team, which was a large reason why I tuned into this game. I had J.K. Dobbins and MHJ. J.K. Dobbins ain't really do too much. That's a testament. Now, how good the Cardinals defense played tonight because they were really good against the run. And although Justin Herbert, he made some really good throws, I'm really mad that the Chargers lost this game because Justin Herbert played out of his mind. He had a really big throw in the second half of this game on third and eight when he threw the ball into a really tight window, like perfect hole shot. Justin Herbert was in his bag tonight. And if you watch Justin Herbert play against Arizona tonight, there's no way you can watch this performance and say with a straight face that this dude is overrated. This dude was making a lot of great throws and tight coverage. He was keeping the Chargers in it. And it's crazy how they kept settling for field goals. I know that Jim Harbaugh wanted to go for it on a couple of times, but some penalties took him out of range, and they had to settle for the field goals. But this was one of those games that Jim Harbaugh, he played to his style, his brand of football. He doesn't care if he has to win it 17-15 or 16-15. The only problem with Jim Harbaugh's philosophy is that when you're a run first team and the run game isn't there, you tend to look a little bit lost at times because you're kind of jostling with, okay, the ground game isn't there. Do we remain dedicated to it or do we just let Justin Herbert air it out? And it didn't take until later on in the third quarter, the Chargers just let go of their philosophy and they just let Justin Herbert start slinking that football. But what hurt them really is the injuries at wide receiver because you had this random guy at tight end who had a career night and outside of Lat McConkie, I didn't know who the hell the Chargers had out there at wide receiver. Like, I knew they were in trouble when I saw Justin Herbert throwing that pass to Jalen Rager. And I'm looking at myself like, oh, man, is this really Jalen Rager about to score a big one play touchdown and the dude fumbled and that play pretty much is the epitome of what his career has been man a few flashes in the pants just to make a lot of boneheaded mistakes but I was surprised the Chargers lost this game even though they were banged up the Cardinals haven't played that great the last couple of weeks and this was definitely a game that Arizona had to win and they were able to walk out with the victory and now moving forward maybe this win is what jump starts them going on a little bit of a run where maybe they can win three out of their next four games. And then you go into mid-November with a lot of momentum, which is when you want to end up hitting your stride. That is when you want to play your best football. But this is it for this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you enjoy, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss when we drop new content. Check us out on all podcasting platforms, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast from. The JT Sports Podcast is available. Follow us on Instagram at JT Sports underscore and on X 
at JT Sports underscore underscore. And I will see you guys shortly with another episode.